I'm big in soul and small in body. This is why I don't want, want to stand behind this uh, thing. You can't see me. So it's better this way. Um, I'd like to talk to you about uh, let's defend our right to die. And I like to thank you that you are all here to help me and others to have legalization all over the world for assisted dying. Um, I have founded Life Circle, a small organization in Switzerland, uh, because I wanted to invest all my power, all my strength into legalization, help to legalize, uh, legalize assisted dying all over the world. I never thought that I would run into very, very big problems within Switzerland. Working for an organization that I am president of and also working as a GP in Switzerland. GPs can be uh, attacked by uh, any groups. Uh, if they uh, say that they support assisted dying, they can be attacked much better than lawyers. Uh, and uh, that's, that's a big problem. I want to talk to you about this problem. Um, the Swiss law... The Swiss law is very open, very much open than the one that Victoria would like to have with 68 points that you should meet. Uh, but uh, for me, the Swiss law is actually almost too open. We have these uh, two restrictions. The person who wants to die must be of sound mind. And the person who is helping uh, must not make money must not earn more money than he would earn in his usual profession. So there should be no financial interest. Uh, in Switzerland, the assisted dying does not have to be done by a medical person. It can be done by anybody, which means the, uh, the medication that somebody has to drink can be given by anybody who does not know anything about medicine. Uh, and... Um, with, with Life Circle, we do it a little bit different because we like to give the medication by intravenous uh, application, but this is not a law and it is also not forbidden, forbidden to do it with intravenous application. Uh, that's again a difference to the, Victoria, the law in Victoria. Uh, we have the Swiss law, which you have seen before, which is very, very open. And then we have the law, a restriction by the medical association. We have point, um, several points that you have to res respect. And I have put in red the incurable and unbearable disease, illness. Uh, up to now, we had restriction by this uh, association by the medical association which restricted the uh, access to assisted dying to terminal illnesses but since 35 years no organization respected this uh, restriction so we always had assisted dying of many many people who were not terminal all organization organizations in switzerland did not respect this we have now a new Law, we have a an, an, uh, new uh, sh suggestion, regulations, guidelines of the Swiss Medical Association, and this accepts incurable and unbearable illness. is not accepted yet by the uh, top medical uh, association. This is only a guideline, and I would like to um, I would like you to have a look at the last. Uh, meaning in case of mental illness assessment by a psychiatrist. I think this is a good idea. If somebody has a psychiatric illness, he should be assessed by a psychiatrist, but we have almost no psychiatrists who do the assessments in case of any illness uh, in, in this, in this uh, matter. Um, so this is, this is one of our very big problems. If one of you uh, starts having belly pain tomorrow and uh, he goes to the doctor and he says, oh, you've got, a, you've got a pancreatic 
carcinoma, you have a life expectancy of maybe a few weeks. If you do a chemotherapy operation, you might live three years, but not more. If I would have this diagnose, I think I would get depressed because I wanted to do so many things in life. Everybody would get depressed. And I have children and uh, my, my parents-in-law live with us and usually they die before me. Now I'm going to die before them. And uh, if I have such a reactive depression, I'm not a, or not, I do not lose my mind, I do not lose my mental capacity. Uh, when, my, when I was six years old, my mother died. I didn't lose my mental capacity, but I was very depressed. When I lost my dog when I was 14 years old, who replaced the love that my, my mother couldn't give me anymore? I was very depressed. I was even more depressed. I didn't lose my mental capacity. I went to school, I went to college, and, and I had no problems. Uh, I split up with my husband when uh, my children were three, four, and six years old. I was horribly depressed because I didn't want to wreck a marriage, but I didn't want to have my children uh, brought up by somebody whom I couldn't uh, accept the opinion. So in each moment, I was depressed, but I was of sound mind. I was always working, looking after my children. This is a very, very big problem. And this is, I have been explaining you this because this is my problem in Switzerland now. I had several, I had several problems, right, with the, with the, with the, right. Uh, everybody thinks that Switzerland is a garden of Eden concerning the right to die. It is not at all. Within seven years of existence of Life Circle, I had nine cases who were opened against me. And there are different groups who open court cases against an organization or a person, a doctor like me, and they rep represent uh, our opponents. When you see in the middle cases opened, three by religious groups, uh, our biggest and most powerful, also in money, money-wise, most powerful uh, opponents, three by the public prosecutors, uh, two by state doctors, and only one by a family member. These are the cases. I do not know whether I, I think the time is a little bit uh, too short to, to talk about every, everyone. Uh, the lady with dementia was a very interesting case. She came from the USA and she had a very special dementia an executive function which was completely blocked. So when she felt that she would want to go to the toilet, she couldn't. She knew where the toilet was. She knew that she had to go, but she couldn't. And then in the end, the, the urine went down her legs. And uh, when I saw her at the, at the hotel, she was so fascinating lady. I talked to her and I said, well, I can't see your dementia. You, when I talked to her, talked to her, I, she didn't have any problems because she had an ex, only an executive function problem. So I told her, come home with me. Uh, you must cook with me for my children. And uh, when, when, I, when she cooked with me, she had to set the table. She had to get something from the fridge and so on. You could very clearly see what her problem was. So she was allowed to die, and uh, the um, public prosecutors opened a court case. They had an autopsy done by this lady, and they found exactly what I was saying that she had. This special type of dementia, where only a very small part of the, of the brain is reduced. And they said, well, we can't do anything about it. And they closed the case, but they, but they said, uh, she couldn't know. How could she know that it was exactly that? You can know because you talk to the people and you, you take them home and they, they show their, their problem. 
Then I have written an article, an article in a newspaper of four doctors in Switzerland uh, about the, the case of three different people. One of them was somebody with dementia. The SIMV, Swiss Medical uh, Association, uh, opened a case against me and they, then, then the, uh, there was still terminal cases, only terminal cases in the uh, Swiss medical organization. So uh, this was a minor problem. It went to the uh, association of the, of the state where I work and where I live in, and it was closed very quickly because they said the SIMV right lines, guidelines are not Swiss law. This was very good. We had a mister with a cancer. That was a very interesting case because this wasn't an assisted dying at all, but I was brought to court. Uh, this was a, a terminal sedation. An assisted dying which lasts 72 hours is not an assisted dying or something has gone, gone wrong very badly. Uh, so uh, this, this state doctor brought me to court. He should have given me a phone call and asked, uh, why did you not report an assisted dying? And I could have told him this was not an assisted dying. We didn't use any sodium pentobarbital. We, it was morphine and he was sleeping for 72 two, uh, hours. When I was in court, uh, the judge asked me, uh, please, Mrs. Breisig, I do not know anything about, assist, about assisted dying and I don't know anything about uh, terminal sedation. Could you explain me? I, I explained and then he said, but then there's no problem. So it was closed. Pietro D'Amico, if you Google him, I am allowed to tell his name because this is a very famous case uh, from Italy, an Italian judge who came to us to die. Uh, I have seen him five times in Switzerland. I have had emails, telephones for three years with Pietro D'Amico. And uh, when I left him go because of an uncurable disease, I did it with all my heart, with a little bit of a broken heart because he was, he was such a wonderful man. Uh, and I think this is why he had to wait for three years. But uh, I, when, I, when I accepted him that he could die, uh, he was 100% of sound mind. He was 100% of sound mind the full three years. And uh, uh, the, the daughter, her, his daughter, connected with a political party, a religious political party of Switzerland, has opened a court case against me. But this was not a very long court case, as you can see. It was closed quite quickly also by the state, state doctor of my state, of my canton, Baselland. Then we had a very interesting court case about self-enrichment, again provoked by the Evan Evangelic uh, Labour Party if, of Switzerland. Uh, uh, the cor uh, I can't find the word. The person, the person who is looking after the finances, <laughs> the treasurer. Uh, our, our treasurer uh, went to, to court with a lawyer two times, four hours. They explained so well the difference between life circle, the association for life and eternal spirit, the foundation for a good death, that the court wrote an eight page uh, report about life circle and eternal spirit. It's in German, but maybe we should translate it sometime into English. Uh, Whenever we have problems with self-enrichment, I can just show this report of eight pages. That's wonderful. The case of Mrs. Chilfaro, you can also read about. Restrictions of medical license. That's uh, when the Swiss government wanted to uh, put me back to only, only terminal cases. We, I'm, I'm very glad that we won this fight against the... Um, state doctor of, my, of, of the neighbor canton, Baselstadt. And the two cases, cases that are going on, uh, one is a minor case, the handling with the sodium pentobarbital. 
They wanted us to hand out the sodium pentobarbital to the people who want to come to die, uh, which means uh, they come, must get the medication in the pharmacy themselves, take it to the hotel, and three days later come to us with the medication and give it to us so we can apply. Imagine what happens in the hotel if a lady comes and her husband wants to die and, well, it's difficult to lose somebody at high age. They might do it themselves in, at the hotel uh, because the 15 grams that we use in Switzerland is enough for two. So this is going to be very interesting. This is not my sorrow. My sorrow is more, much more the psychosomatic disease lady that I uh, led into, into death. She was 100% of sound mind. She had a psychosomatic illness, two psychosomatic illness. If you imagine, you have a bellyache. Each of you has had a bellyache. Now, this bellyache, which can be really bad, huh? you go like that, huh? this is there for 24 hours a day. It never goes away. No medication helps. You start vomiting when you take morphine, and the, and the, and the bellyache gets worse. She had two different types. She had cramps, two different types of psychosomatic illnesses, which were not curable. Nobody could change them. They, she were by several doctors, at several doctors, and I accepted her. Uh, I can remember it's the last, the last, the last, last short. Uh, yes, yes. Um, this lady went to the fourth floor of the nursing home where she was living, and she showed me the place where she was going to jump. And down there was not grass, there was um, um, beton, pavement. Uh, but she said, look, this is my last solution. I have been working in a nursing home. I do not want to do that to all the other people. Imagine the windows, it was like that. Everybody could see the, the body down there. Uh, when I think what is coming on to me with this court case, and you might read a lot in the newspapers soon, when I think what is coming towards me, I think sometimes I think I should have let her jump. We all must fight. We all must fight. I should not have let her jump. She had the right to die. She was of sound mind, and she had the right to die the way she died surrounded by her friends in peace and safety. And I'm so happy. It is our human right, and we all must stand up and say, yes, we need all over the world the legalization of assisted dying. Sorry.